This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I have a dear friend, Carolina Korkova. She is obviously a famous actress and model, but more importantly, the co-founder of Griff and Ivy Rose, and just trying to empower the world with wellness, health, which should be a priority for everyone today. Carolina, welcome to the Playbook. Thank you so much for coming on. Hi, David. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Well, I want to start with two things about your profession that uh, a lot of people don't know. The number one thing is most people don't know that I was actually a L'Oreal model. I bet you didn't know that either. I didn't know that. And don't look so surprised. Good for you. I, I was the camouflage hair person for the great kind of a gray away product. And I use that as my example that if Dave Meltzer can manifest himself being a L'Oreal model, you can do anything and you can manifest anything in the world. So Secondly, what I learned about your profession was the number one attribute I had no idea was patience. You, you have yeah. to be literally the most patient person in the world. You know, it's interesting. I'm very patient when it comes to certain things and definitely my job, you know, sitting in a chair and, 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 and sometimes depends what kind of thing, let's say photo shoot or thing you do, right? Sometimes, yes, it's, they're completely changing you. Or even as an actor, when you do a specific role, they might make your hair gray or long or pink and blue, or they give you piercings or they give you, you know, purple eyes, eyeballs, um, you know, all kinds of different things where you, you do have to go through changes and things just takes time. And then you fitting, you try and close, and then you're trying to figure out the lie. You know, sometimes these images we think, yeah, sometimes they happen very quickly, but some, you know, there is a process. It's a, it's a setup. And there, there was a lot of people involved in these shoots. I mean, you, if you, you've done L'Oreal, that's a big job, big commercial job. So that's a big production right there. That's not just, you know, the photographer and the hair and makeup, right? That's like our director, director, assistant, production, catering um and so you know you have to definitely like people in 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 my profession you have to get along with people you have to learn how how to um, navigate people uh which really taught me a lot you know i'm definitely someone who is a little bit more shy for sure um but being in the profession i'm in where you deal with so many people around you it's not a job where you do on your own uh it's definitely more like a teamwork job a group job um you really learn to navigate through different personalities and you know how how do you get along with everybody which for me it's really important when i work it's really getting along with everybody making sure the mood is really good everybody feels good and happy because when you're an artist when i feel like i'm very sensitive to those things and i pick up on it and if something it's off or somebody is a little off or not feeling good it does affect the way I feel because I can sense it and feel it and it will affect my performance. So really setting the mood and the tone on the set around you, it's really important. And, you know, it, you got to do whatever it takes, right? Patience, making somebody laugh, um, you know, spoiling someone or just listening to someone, you know, you really have to learn to be yeah, a good listener and really be absor- uh, uh, observatory to who people are and what's going on with them and really not just to be about you. And your intelligence goes far beyond, you know, an academic intellect. You have this great emotional intelligence like you're talking about here, which I think applies to Griff and Ivy Rose, you know, this feeling good, being a holistic approach to wellness, but you also have uh, this adaptable intelligence. And, you know, when people can have dramatic changes in their life, which occurs in your profession as well. I mean, at 17 years old, you were kind of thrust upon the world on the cover of the biggest, you know, beauty and health magazine, you know, Vogue's cover. Even girl. Earlier, I mean, I started when I was, I started working and traveling when I was 15. Oh my gosh. 16, 17, definitely. It, it, it did happen early. It's early. What, sure. what, what lessons have you learned? Because I think a lot of people don't have the adaptable intelligence that you have. A lot of people have emotional intelligence to make people feel good and laugh and feel good about themselves, which, like I said, is aligned with Grip and Ivy Rose. But, you know, you have this extraordinary ability to deal with dramatic change. It's not like you came from the United States as well. That would be enough to throw people into, you know, an amazing chaotic mindset. But what were some of the lessons that you've learned about dealing 
with dramatic change, which so many of us have to deal with today with the pandemic. So what really helped me, it was having a father who was a professional athlete. He was a professional basketball player. So I did grow up with him training a lot and really seeing how he handled um, his job because he also had a day job. He was a detective at the criminal police. And at the same time, he was a pro basketball player. I mean, you're talking about over 30 years ago, you know, athletes had day jobs. They were not, that was not their sole profession. I mean, now the level, it's so high and so demanding. You can do anything else, right? You really, if you're an athlete, that's all you can do. And that's already a lot. And there was a lot of pressure and, you know, the level is so competitive and so high. It's really growing up with my dad and seeing how he handled everything and how professional and how disciplined he was. Um, I also at early age, I, um, I did a lot of sports. Um, I was, believe it or not, I'm, I'm kind of, you, were, you would never think that, but I was um, a professional kind of gymnast. So I did uh, audition and I got accepted into this amazing gymnast school in my country in the Czech Republic. So I would train every day before school and every day after school. And the school I went to was a lot of, ath- a lot of athletes went there. Um, so really, I feel like that gave me a, such an incredible foundation from very young age um, and really set me for anything you know, that I'm doing now in life. It's really having the discipline, um, wanting, if you want to be the best, well, what are you going to do for that? You know, it's not enough, oh, I just really want to be the best and having the intention. But what are you doing for that and towards that, right? Are you willing to, you know, to be vulnerable? Are you willing to train hard? Are you willing to, to do more than anybody else? You know, go beyond, beyond, beyond and push yourself beyond, beyond. Uh, because there is a lot of talented people, right? So it's really like, and, and, and we hear these stories with like even, you know, mega athletes now, right? Like, They might be there now or later than anybody else. You know, they really put in the work and the effort and and have that discipline um, and just, you know, wanting to be the best that they can be. That's really, that's very important. And and it also teaches you being an athlete that, you know, there's there's this thing that actually my husband says, it's not. It's not all about winning, right? You're not, it's, you, you, you don't win and lose. You win and learn. And I think that's a really another important thing. We don't win and lose. We win and learn. So even if you don't win, you don't do something right. You're not the best at it. There's so much we're learning through that process and through that journey. Um, so I really think like if you have kids or you're, young I think having a sport like that it's it's a just a great foundation to learn and understand that already how that works because that will apply into anything you do in life right you're a businessman a lawyer um entrepreneur uh, right um yeah. you need to learn those kind of things and skills and you, and you have you've applied you know the regimen the discipline to your business with Griff and Ivy Rose in fact you learn similar regimens, wellness regimens when you were young, which I think you've applied to your business. You know, how have some of those attributes applied, you know, from, you know, the walkway and the stage uh, and behind the camera to now in the wellness, hyper competitive, again, you know, very crowded space of wellness that you've used, you know, different regimens, disciplines and lessons uh, to create you know, this unbelievable uh, product offering, how have you applied those to your business? So I, I, again, apply a lot of things from growing up um, and from my childhood, the way I was raised, I grew up in the Czech Republic, but then very early on, I traveled the world and I'm very curious and I've always been into very natural things and, you know, things that I can do that mother nature gave us, or, you know, if I had a, uh, pain or something like what can I do n- to fix it and help it naturally I'm definitely not someone or maybe I don't come from that bringing you know is there is there a magic pill for everything no you know I think it's you know maybe sometimes having a nap or maybe drinking enough water or maybe doing a little exercise you know there are things that really are easy simple things that we can all do uh, that can really help us and benefit us and I think 
also learning to understand your body and listening to your body. It's really important. And something I even had to learn, you know, um, it really did take me a long time because really the body tells us and shows us different things that we don't always listen to. And we feel like, oh no, I can keep going. I can do more. So it's really learning kind of more of that. I, I, I don't want to say balance because I feel like balance, it's, it's a word that's used so hard. And it's like, well, how do you balance, right? It's yeah, learning your own balance, understanding, okay, you know, how much I can push myself. And if I have understanding that with push and working hard comes also relaxation, having fun, relaxing, and kind of, you know, you, you need those two things together, right? Um, you can't be machine all the time and perfection and, and, and no, I will never do that. Like, and I always say in order to be good, you got to be bad. Sometimes you've got to have maybe something that's not the best, but if you, if you like in a mood and you really want to taste it, you want to have it, have it because you need to experience it for yourself. And then, you know, you know, that was good. I've had it. It's out of my system. You know, maybe it was not the healthiest thing for me that I should have, but I've had it. And now I don't need to have it rather than just you go and you don't have anything. And then you're like, Oh, explode months later. Okay. And you're like, I'm going to have all of it. And, you know, I cannot help myself. Um, and then definitely traveling the world and seeing different things, how different cultures deal with different things and beauty, what they do and how do you achieve, you know, for me, beauty, it's not about just how, you look, but it's also your energy, right? That's it, that, that comes from within. It's not just what we just see, you know, yes, makeup can help. And of course, creams and there are things that help us and make us feel more beautiful, but there's a lot that happens inside that gives us that, that drive gives us the life to the beauty. Uh, and that's really a lot comes, starts with what you put in your body is the same as a car. If you don't put a good water, gas, oil in your car, you don't take care of it. Your body is the same thing. If we don't take care of it, don't put the right things in it, it's not going to give us back what we want. It's not going to perform as we want. We're not going to look as good as we want. We're not going to feel as good as we would like to, you know? Um, so I, I've definitely, you know, in starting Griffin Ivy Rose, which is, is a line that we started first for children. Because it, I, when we started, it was really around the time when I started to have, um, I had my first son and then I had my second one. We really wanted to create products that really delve with the whole wellness and the well-being of, of a child from outside in and inside out. So we do have the three categories, bath and body. We have our herbal elixirs, which are there to kind of assist with more common things that children deal with, but also adults. And those products can be actually used by children and adults for sleep, immune system support, tummy aches, um, and mood. And, and, or, and then we have probiotics, which helps with a healthy gut flora, which we know it's very important. Um, and it's a very complex thing. I mean, we, we don't even know all the good biomes and and, and the good bacteria that live in our gut, because there's billions and billions of them, you know, we, I mean, I think we're going to study them for billions of years, but there are some that we know about and we know the powers of them. And we know the immune system lives in your gut, which is in your stomach. If you don't know gut, like it's, it's right there. Um, so, you know, you want to kind of make sure everything keeps strong and healthy. You want to prevent. I also am a big believer in preventing and taking care of yourself early. I do not think there is no such a thing. Oh, you know, it's too early to start to be healthy and take care of yourself. No, I think even little kids want to take care of themselves. They want to feel good. They don't want to be sick. They want to be out and playing with their friends, right? So they even, even at such a small age, they understand that they know that. And um, I think we're in a great time now and where we have a great opportunity, you know, especially this year where we really had to really learn and take care of ourselves and understand that really our health is the most, it is a super important thing. And, um, you know, what can we do and just really slowing down and taking care of ourselves and how does that look like? And having, 
your your own little healthy beauty wellness routine for yourself, for your family, with your kids, with your loved ones, with your parents that you can all do and share together, um, you know, to stay really strong and healthy and happy. And that comes from, you know, your childhood to your children to, you know, probably even your grandchildren. One of the things that resonates with me is the idea of quality ingredients. And I'm not just talking about the quality ingredients in your grandmother's garden that set you, you know, onto this path, but the quality ingredients in life with the weighted balance that you discuss that everyone should have a weighted balance. You know, it's not uh, where you visit, it's where you live. Uh, you know, I always say when it comes to trying out things, the good with the bad and enjoying your life with a weighted balance. But one of the quality ingredients that to me is I, did research even further on you and, you know, got so excited about having you on was the importance of the simplicity of the ingredients of love and where that love starts, how it's shared, uh, how important it is to children, especially. Um, I'd love, no pun intended, for you to share with us, you know, your quality ingredient of love and how it's placed within your personal and professional life. Hold on, I'm trying to like understand your question. Um, definitely love is super important. Um, without love, we we wouldn't flourish, right? Flower without love by someone, the sun, the water, it, it would die. Um, and the same for us humans, children without having affection, touch, care, love, good food, food when made with love, food made, uh, grown in, in the nature, um, somebody giving you attention, listening to you. Um, it's so, so important. And I was, you know, I was very lucky growing up with great parents and that they always gave me that love and that security and that confidence. Um, and then it about loving yourself though, too. I mean, you're so, oh, yeah, absolutely. You I love yourself. It's definitely, that's where it starts for sure. Cause you know, I, I even say it to my children, how can you love someone else if you don't love yourself? Yeah, it, it inspires us to take care of ourselves too. When we really learn to love ourselves, you know, even at a young age, we want to take care of ourselves and have longer lives, more healthy, productive lives. And we want to be able to empower and share that love with other people as well. Um, you have so many lessons from your childhood. What's your favorite lesson to teach your children? Uh, you know, I have my go-tos like, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Um, but what are some of the lessons that you really want to instill in your children? Well, definitely values. Um, and it's super important having good values, uh, being kind and polite and really install my own traditions, right? We all grew up different places. We all have different backgrounds. We have different grandparents and parents. And, you know, we were brought up very all differently, which is all that's what makes us beautiful and colorful and, and different. And I think that is important, keeping your traditions. What were your traditions when you were growing up that you maybe didn't think they were so special, but that even to now to this day, you realize how important they were, how special they were, and how you remember those moments. And it's now about recreating those moments with your own family, because your own children will then look back and they remember, oh, you know, I remember when mom and dad, they always sat with us at dinner, or they always were there for us so they always came to that game or you know maybe they were not there all the time but they always listened to me or um i i think traditions are something very beautiful and also i feel like especially this year with everything that's been going on it's so important because families are far away from each other they're not able to grow and create these new traditions uh, and, but that's at the same time, that's what keeps them so close, even though they're far away, that they have these traditions in their homes, in their heart, within themselves and their own family, that they keep continue to do while they're not able to do with their own, you know, with, let's say, the, the parents and the grandparents. Um, so I think traditions are something really beautiful and something that you cannot necessarily buy. Yeah, absolutely. You only can create. Well, last question, we've both been, you know, our lives have shifted from an extraordinary amount of travel and exposure to being more uh, at home with our families. Uh, for you, what has been the biggest uh, 
awakening uh, with the pandemic and the new style of life that you have? What's the, the biggest gift that you've been given uh, through the pandemic? Well, I, I think you said it, time, quality time. Um, I think that's a huge gift for all of us. I, you don't even have to travel, but I think just be able to connect with yourself, with your loved ones. Um, you know, maybe sometimes I'm sure for, for all of us was not always the good times, right? Because it's like, it's a lot. You're suddenly, everybody's together 24-7, not just for a day or two weeks or that three months. So it's, it's a year. So I think it really proves, you know, also relationships and, and, and bonds and, and, you know, so it, it, it really, if, if you made it through, you know, you have something, if you didn't, you know, then like, Hey, you know, maybe I know I need to change or maybe, you know, I was just kind of there, but I really wasn't there. We're, you know, I, I think there was a lot of things became more clear for all of us whether it was personal or business, I think really this time showed us, yeah, where we want to go and where we at and where we going to go and what's it. important and what isn't. Yeah. It's given great clarity on what I call the great chain of feeding. It's really revealed, you know, who feeds us and who bleeds us. And it's allowed us to go ahead and allow the things that bleed us to fall away and the things to feed us to enhance and grow. Well, I want to thank you. You are the epitome to me of beauty inside and out. You're a beautiful person, and I love the fact that you're trying to help other people, especially children, with their inner beauty, especially uh, for someone that has spent so many years with people admiring your outer beauty. Uh, to reveal your true beauty is extraordinary and so valuable, and I want to thank you for showing and displaying that playbook to success to everybody here. Uh, thank you so much, Carolina Krakova. She's a co-founder of Griff and Ivy Rose, of course, actress and a model that everybody knows of. Thank you so much. This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.